Now the hand's going to be hard to select, so we'll actually click on frame zero. And the weapon will too, so we'll click on frame zero. And the weapon, we have to rotate a bit. Okay, so now we have our knight in his basic ordering, which you see he's still out of order as far as the depth. So what we're going to do is start with a backmost texture and work our way forward. Now, in this case, he's being looked at from the side, sort of, uh, the perspective is. So I think in this case, this arm would be in the far back. Now what we can do is we can set the depth here. Go one at a time, we can just set it back. Or we can go over to the bone properties and set it back. Let's go to a nice high number of 15. It doesn't really matter, just we want this in the very back. So this arm's in the very back. Next, we'll have the sword. And again, we could select it through here, but since it's a high number, I just want to go ahead and do it directly. The hand, it'll be hard to select the hand while the gizmo's in the way, so we'll just click on the hand frame here. And let's count up 13. So we've got 15, 14, 13. Now we probably want this leg, so make that 12. Then this leg, make that 11. Then the tunic, let's make that 10 body, let's make that 9, then the head, let's make that 8, then the helmet, let's make that 7, right arm, let's make that 6, the shield will be on top, let's make that 5. Now we have extra depth, but uh, that's fine. It doesn't really matter as long as they're just in the order that we want. Now let's kind of fix them. As far as his positioning, his head's a little squished down, so let's go back to his head. Oops, that's the body. This pose is a very important pose because we're going to create all of our clips based on this layout. So we want to be very sure that we get the right one, the right uh, layout for everything. So I want to make sure this looks pretty good. If we click off somewhere off the keyframes, you can see a full color. Now when you select a particular image, you can see it lightens and everything else darkens. That can be changed in the settings if you go up here to the gear. You can change this part, uh, darken, the bone darken setting to lighter or darker uh, if you want, if you don't like that darkening. You can also set the grid size. It defaults to 50 pixels. Uh, this can be useful if you're trying to line things very specifically. 50 is a good number. It's not too intrusive. You can also show the selected bone bounds. So whatever bones you've selected, it'll put a purple box around it. And you can show or hide the gizmo labels, like the position, the rotation number, things like that. So we look at this and we say, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, that, that'll be there, our base image for all of our uh, animation clips that we create in the future. So we'll go ahead and leave it like that. We think that's pretty good. Now you'll notice if we scrub here, nothing happening happens because we only have the first keyframe set. Not, there's nothing to interpolate, nothing to move. So what we're going to do, this is how I do it, but uh, obviously every animator is going to do it differently. I like to set my end keyframes first. So I'm going to highlight all these keyframes at frame 10. And you can see the purple right now. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate the first keyframes. That's going to duplicate these here. So it's bookending, basically. It's we're going to be looping this, so we want the end to be just like the beginning. Now since the end is the beginning, there's nothing in between. It still doesn't do anything and we scrub it. Let's go ahead and put this on loop since we are going to be looping. We can do is do it once through loop. We can ping pong back and forth, or we can go to the end and stop, clamp forever. So now, now that we have our bookended frames, let's go ahead and start in the middle and start keyframing. Now, there's different ways you can set a keyframe. One way is to right click and insert a blank keyframe. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice it's red colored, that means nothing is actually set. So if you look over here, nothing's been set on this keyframe, even though we've set the keyframe. But one good thing about this editor is you can just keyframe certain properties, so you don't have to go through and set your texture for every single frame. 
you just set the texture on the ones where it changes or your position where it changes or scale or rotation whatever um, property you want to change that's what you keyframe so in this one we're going to make the body breathe in and out so let's go ahead and pick on X and Y image scales and you notice as I select things different gizmos show so if I just have the X image scale it's only going to show the X gizmo X scale gizmo but if I add in the Y then I get the uniform and the Y so we're kind of making him breathe here but we also want to move the position so as I add the position it puts in the arrows so now I've made his body expand with air but now I have to offset his other body parts. So let's go ahead and insert a blank keyframe for the head and then pick the position X and Y and move the head up. Now the arms are actually going to rotate and move and there's a shortcut to that if you right click there's an insert position rotation keyframe so let's select that. And let's just move the arm up and rotate it in. Same with the right arm. So now we have the parts that we want to animate. Now we can scrub this. And you can see as we go through, he breathes in and out. We can go reverse, we can go fast, or we can play in real time. Click on this play button up here. You can see it's looping through, whereas we're on a loop, and it's doing it at five frames per second. We can change that if we want them to go faster. Or slower but I think five is a good number for this animation so now we have the stand animation these other attributes here we'll uh, look at further in, in other animations but uh, this is the basic way to create an animation